Hey, welcome back to my Travel Ends podcast. Today, my guest is Tisha Vaculin. She is an actress, and we'll get into all the other many things that she has going on because there's several. How are you today, Tisha? Hi, thanks for having me. I'm doing wonderful. How about yourself? Doing excellent. We're getting into the summertime, so I'm happy. It gets a we get a little warmth, but uh, it's really warm out here. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a, most of the country is is warmed up, so it's they're, they're joining us. Oh my gosh. This year has been the hottest year I've experienced ever. We're in like the 114 degree range right now. So. Whew. Yeah. I, I, I'm not, I'm not there. I'm, I'm a little cooler than that. Yeah. So. <laughs> I like the seventies and eighties. I think that's like the best time of the year when it's seventies and eighties anywhere I go. Well, like when you go to Vegas, it's, mm. I think it's like February to like April. And then you get into September to October, November, and you're perfect there. If it was like that all year round, I'd be there. Yeah, right. I love it out there. Except for it's 120 right now. and mm -hmm. I'm not too far from there. It's the same <laughs> <Right>. weather. <laughs> so you, you've been staying busy. And so I'm glad I, I caught you on a, a rare moment of downtime. So how, how's the actor's yeah. business going? It's going well. I mean, you get what you ask for, right? I put it out in the universe. <laughs> exactly. And now I am here. My downtime are a few days a month at most. And I'm traveling for my TV series as well as that, you know, two upcoming projects plus some of the um, projects I'm producing. So kind of all over the place. And I think this is a very fitting podcast title for me. I'm very excited to be here. <laughs> exactly. So Explain what does your role as a producer do for, for on, on the movies or, or work that you're working on? What does a producer do? Well, that's a good question because sometimes I'm not sure either. <laughs> okay. uh, my, role, uh, my role as an executive producer would be more on the side of uh, financial as well as just kind of being a part of, say there's a board, board of directors, I guess. Um, you know, you kind of be part of those meetings, even though, in my case, I kind of have to step down and let everyone else do their job. I'm sort of there supervising what's happening sure. uh, on those particular types of projects. Um, so I've done producer projects and executive producer projects, which actually are you know a little bit different, uh, where the producer plays a huge role on every part of the process. I'd say an executive producer is really just a board of directors member, if that makes sense. Sure, sure. Sometimes the EP will just be like the money person or right, someone that wants to that's get it. an extra credit in there. The credits are amazing. Yes, that's exactly what I'm looking for. One of those extra credits on IMDb for sure. Well, yeah, and it all adds up. I mean, I had, I had somebody tell me that I should put um, host and producer of my show because I do everything. I mean, I'm like, yes. And they're like, I'm like, well, I, whatever, you know, one man band. No, you absolutely should. I think it's really important um, when you're in this business that people, um, when they see those credits, like an executive producer or anything on the, the backside of what you're doing, yeah, it's a huge credit to have. I mean, there's so much to it. People think that, you know, the work is all in the talent and I would love to give all that credit to us as talent. But there's just so much that goes on behind the scenes, as you know, since you're doing it by yourself, Right. You're the talent and the producer and the editor. There's just a lot to it. So yeah, <laughs> exactly you right. help that credit. Well, you you don't know, like reality shows or scripted realities. There's what? people. That, they're not real. No, they're they're, they're I, real. I'm just teasing you. <laughs> but, but you know, I haven't. My my youngest daughter worked with some very famous women on right. the show. And yeah. there's just, I mean, there's just a tremendous amount of people behind the scenes. Oh like yeah. You see the four or five people on the, on the monitor, on the screen, but there's 40 or 50. So behind. many people behind the scenes and there really is a lot of scripting going on there. So I just had to tease you a little bit because yeah, I, when I got into this side of, uh, I always said I'd never do reality TV and here I am uh, <laughs> doing it right now. <laughs> and I, I did, I thought it was a hundred percent scripted. And then I came in and was like, you can't make this stuff up. Like this stuff is just actually happening. This is legit reality TV right here. So. <laughs> well, yeah, I guess the, the, the concept is, you know, I call them not non-scripted, but you know, a lot of the shows. Yeah. 
because there's so much setup, lighting, right. sound, oh, yeah. everything else. You know, it's not like, oh, I just showed up at your house today and we're, sure, we're and this we're, happens. everything looks great. Right. Yeah, there was a camera inside your house when I answered the door. <laughs> and, and the lighting was perfect and this and the reflective sheet shields that, were there. Yes. Yeah. Going so, back to one and doing it again. Oh yeah. Yeah. So yeah, no, you're they're right. There's absolutely so much scripting to it. And you you do have those laid out um scripts. You actually get to look over your scripts. This is what I'm doing today, this is what's happening. And so there really is a truth to the script behind it. But yeah. the funny thing for me was because I thought it was all scripted and then came in and there was just so many things that happened. And I was like, wow, this is different for me because I've only ever been in TV and film. And now in reality, I'm like, there's really drama. This is real stuff. Like we're just over here existing and all this crazy stuff is happening. And we don't know why, like, we're, are we, are we doing this on purpose? We're not, I swear it's, it's real. <laughs> No, and that, that it's real. Like uh, the show might might, might right. have worked out. They didn't tell them what to say. They just said, "Look, on, yeah. on Wednesday we're going to be set up over at this girl at this person's mm -hmm. house. We need you to come right. over for, for two hours to absolutely, to, and then do whatever you want to do." But uh -huh. you're where we're doing it, right? And what's funny is that that stuff, right? That's how our show is too. To where everything and inside our cast and our family, everything's wonderful. But it's like the outsiders that aren't a part of our. Uh, sure show that bring the chaos or the drama and we're like whoa what's ha how come this is happening like we didn't we didn't plan on it you're not supposed to be here what's going on <laughs> but it plays for good tv so i guess we'll keep it in there so what's the deal with the show it's called uh billboards inc I believe. it's called yeah it's called billboards inc it's uh based around um a business which is a full uh, access pr company and marketing firm we do or a one-stop shop if anything that you need you can come to us i would say that our specialty comes in uh the realm of billboards obviously where we do it differently so if we have a client most people go to say they're pr people for write-ups or put me on the red carpet can you get me into this place where over here at billboards inc we actually we're elevating you guys we're putting you in front of people. We're collaborating across the internet to where, you know, five to 15 million people are going to see and have access to your brand now. But the topper that's so unique to what we do versus any other company like ours, we celebrate it. We actually go out and celebrate it. We launch and we have parties and events. And on top of that, we also attach ourselves. This is why I fell in love with these guys. Uh, Jen and Will, you guys are amazing. Shout out to you guys for everything you've done by putting this company together. But they go and tut, um, collectively market with, say, like a foundation Lyme, for Lyme disease, a Make-A-Wish. Uh, uh, they just worked with a lady whose daughter had cancer. Um, they're constantly doing something good for the world. They're raising money. Uh, we also had Buddha Bullying, which was amazing. That just happened for Mother's Day. So they attach themselves to these amazing foundations on top of that to now the brands are like, wow, not only are we getting this, 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 and this, but they're over here doing a good cause and people want to be attached to that. Sure. So I feel like Billboards Inc. Um, just in the realm of being a business is so unique and so amazing. And I'm so flattered that they're even letting me be a part of their business um, but yeah, what they they actually had this amazing production team uh, called Deanna Land Productions come in and say, hey, we want to turn this into a show. And at the time, I was a sideline watching, seeing what was going on and trying to help them because I saw what they were trying to do. And uh, eventually they invited me to be a part of their team, part of their cast. And here we are. It's amazing. So what is the show out yet? The show is not out yet. That's what I thought. Our, okay. our goal is October. Um, if we can get it done uh, before hiatus, I would say that's when it would be released. And that's our fingers crossed hoping. We do have a couple distributors that I'm not allowed to say. Yeah. We're teetering between the two and it's looking really good. It, is it, do you, do you go for cable now or are you looking just for streaming services? We have both. Okay. We have one for both. Yes. Um, it's we're so going interesting. For that we're going for network. Everyone always, I mean, growing up, at least, and I'm old, you wanted to be on TV, you know, ABC, NBC, CBS were the big ones, and CW and all that. 
But right. now, now it's Amazon, Hulu, Netflix, YouTube. It really is. Right. I mean, and it, it, you're hitting different demographics. If you're talking, mm -hmm. I'm, I think we're in the same age group. And I think you go from our age group up and we still want to turn on the TV and, you know, have that relation where you go under our age group or at least under 40. Oh, wait, did I just give away my age? I, I just gave away my age. I'm I not saying anything. <laughs> <laughs> Edit that out. No, I'm just kidding. Um, so, uh, but under 40, I'd say that they're more adjusted to uh, the platforms, sure. the social media, like they, they sort of grew up on this. And so it's easier for them to just get on their phone and go like this. If they want to see something, that's all they need to do. And it's right like there. right there and they can be alone or with friends. I mean, you're mirroring, mirroring stuff to your TVs. Now, if you want to watch it with a group, there's not even, right. you don't even go on your TV. I don't know if most children nowadays know how to use the TV. <laughs> they just do it from their phone. So it's, yeah, it's interesting, but we are still going for network. Um, I still think that uh, high and enough both work and both are amazing, right. but you know, for reality tv we still have those housewives that are sitting in the, and like wanting to watch what we got going on so it I, should be I interviewed a guy named steve mcbee and his family the mcbee dynasties that sounds familiar yeah yeah they were uh they were on paramount so okay. they they got streamed on paramount paramount plus whatever and yes so, i mean but paramount's a good one that's a that's a real thing i mean it's just interesting that there's so many more platforms for people to go oh, on there's so many now yeah yeah there's so many and I, I there's some that we could care less to even consider and then mm -hmm. like the paramount and a couple others that definitely have been looked into and considered so well you've been an actress for a long time off and on right yes how is it different now oh my gosh so many ways is it different i would say the number one thing and I miss it, and then I don't miss it, would be that you do, you show up to the casting director's office. I, I remember going to, I mean, I met Bob Pope at a UPS store once when I was like 20, and I was copying off my headshot and resume, and I was putting them in a vanilla, or manila, vanilla, yeah. manila <laughs> things, and you know how you had to do that? You had to yeah. write all your stuff, and you'd go hand deliver it to the Hope and pray that somebody in casting would actually it. see you like i'd get all ready i'd have like all these folders and i'd go pass them out and you know you it was definitely a one-on-one -on -one thing and you'd get lucky i was i was blessed to eventually meet mary jo slater which is christian slater's mom and she actually gave me maybe one of my first i mean i was in her office all the time all the time to where she finally was like hey miss faculin I see you. And she gave me opportunities uh, to do some auditions and stuff. And that was definitely a changing um, part of my life. But that was huge because now I can do an audition in right here. Like what we're doing, I can turn yep. off the recording and start over as many times as I want, send it in. And they're just like, okay, well, she's got the look. She's got this, you know, I we like her, we don't. Yeah, yeah. it's so different. I agree. I mean, I, I even tell just finding a job. Yeah. I mean, you go back 30 years ago, you were looking at newspapers, the help wanted section. Yes. You know, you, you hope they gave you a phone number so you could actually call instead of just the fax number for your resume. Mm -hmm. And now Absolutely. it's like, now you can do background research on every company that you're applying for. You can find out that, where that guy went to high school with or college. I mean, it's totally. And you, look at socials too, I've heard in the regular yeah. nine to five world, they're even doing that. So what, what a change. Wow. Where we've yeah. been and where we are now. It's very interesting. It's going to be, yeah. It, it, especially I think with the acting world, it's, it's really changed because like you said, you can do virtual, virtual auditions. Now you don't have to go yeah. in and sit in a room and wait there all day and then they, in a room with they a bunch of go, people nope. yeah look like you you're like okay which one of us and your heart's racing and then you have to go in front of these group of people it's just different now i i wouldn't mind going back to that i feel like that's what's missing um is that interaction because i have you know i have had this look to where i did get typecast a lot as you know the mean girl or the blonde bimbo or this or that or whatever but what I've noticed is when I was in front of the directors, the producers and the casting directors, they could see the emphasis of my personality, which 
right. years outside of the blonde bimbo. And there is a little sarcasm there. There's a lot of one on one and they can kind of see that I'm not just I'm just not the girl with the, you know, the yellow starburst. I actually <laughs> have a personality and I can be funny and 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 be interesting because sometimes when they see you, they say, well, this isn't going to work for this. But I have yeah. this other project she might work for because she's kind of funny. I I like to believe I'm kind of funny. I might only be funny to myself, but <laughs> who knows? So that's the part I think that they should bring back a little bit more, at least for second auditions. I think we should be more yeah. in person. I agree. I mean, it, it's kind of like I remember when uh, I got divorced. I'm now remarried. My, and I met my wife on Match. And she was oh, just awesome. like, she's just like, oh, my God, you know, are you going to have like a high squeaky voice or it's not going to match the face, you know? Yeah. So, it's the same Wait, thing. No, that's true. Wait, there's so many ways to catfish nowadays. Like I told you, I didn't have hair and makeup this morning. So <laughs> I would have showed up with my hair on top of my head. <laughs> totally. She, she goes, when we, when we first met in person, she's like, I didn't know if you were going to have like a limp or one leg was going to be like eight <laughs> inches shorter or something, you know? Yes. Yes. That's so funny. I love that. How long have you been married? Going on well, uh, t over 10 years now. So. Oh, that's awesome. I yeah. love that. And the first one was 18, took a couple of years off in between. And then I've first, my, my first one was like that too, 17. Yeah. Yeah. Long time. That's good. That's awesome. Yeah, you, yeah. Can't, you can't live, you can't live life without your other person, your other half. So here comes the question. All right. How, how difficult is it? Because you've been traveling quite a bit lately. Yes. How difficult is it maintaining relationships while you're on the road? And, and then. Yeah. I, I'm just curious because like I had my job when I met my, 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 my wife. So she knew my schedule and sounds like you're traveling more now. So is it going to be more difficult? How's that all yeah. working out for you? No, that is, I mean, absolute, uh, good question. I get asked that a lot and I don't really know how to answer it, but I will say this. Um, the hardest part for me has been that I had, uh, my youngest, I have three kids. My youngest is 16 and I have, uh, you know, 50, 50 custody with my, um, ex and he's now staying with my, um, son or my son is now staying with my ex full time yeah. while I'm out here. Something that's new because I'm traveling so much. It just got to the point where not only did I need to be more on location, um, but I am traveling so much and it's hard. It's, I want to be with my baby every day. I, my other two were able to have that experience. And so my son for his last two years, isn't going to have that. And I have to remind myself what I'm doing it all for and how hard I've worked to get where I am. And thank goodness I have, you know, the baby's dad that's willing and able to do those things and, and be good for my son. So that's been the hardest part. Yes. I think, um, in relationships, distance, is a thing anyways like I could date anyone from anywhere and it wouldn't matter if they were my neighbor I am never going to see you because I'm always gone <laughs> <laughs> right so yeah I think in the realm of spouse it's hard as well you got to tame those fears inside the relationship of how many other people you're around as well as we never see each other right how do you how do you keep that in existence when you're gone so much. So that's been, yeah, that's a good question. It's, it's really hard because it does affect those relationships. Um, you know, even my middle daughter, she's probably one of my best friends and it takes a toll on her because she wants that time with her mom and she's 20 yeah. years old now she's out doing her own thing, but like, mom, all you do is work. All you do is travel. Like, you know, when are you going to take time for yourself? When am I going to see you? And I am home for a day and then gone again for six days. And it's hard. It is yeah, hard. I mean, that's, it's, yeah. it's interesting because I have to work the rodeo every year and it's in December and it's the yeah. same, same time as my daughter's birthday. So uh, yeah, you know, I've worked the rodeo now. I think this will be my 15th year. So it's just, you know, you got to miss it. I can't. Oh yeah. And they're not going to let me go home for one day just for my daughter's birthday. And you know, no. And that's the thing that's hard. I actually, it's funny you say that because I missed my son's birthday and I've for 16, well, for 15 years, never missed anything like no school events, nothing. Yeah, I yeah. was that frontline mom. And even though I was doing this on the side, now my schedule is I'm literally scheduled out for two years at a time right now. And I, 
I just don't. I I did. I cried. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I cried that day. I realized while I was sitting on set and my makeup lady's like telling me to dab it. Don't cry. And I'm like, oh, I'm not <laughs> for my baby. He's 16 now. So yeah, it was hard. But um, I have to keep in my faith in God and then in the fact that I'm doing this for the right reasons. I'm not yeah. doing it for the fame. I'm doing it to elevate my family to a different place so they don't have to struggle the way I struggled. Sure. Yeah. And, and at least the way I kind of did it when my girls were in high school, uh, I tried in the summertime, I tried taking them out on the road with me. Yeah. You know, so I would take them, we'd go down to San Diego or we, you know, I wouldn't take them on the big long trips, but right. You know, just trying and that way they would see like, it's not all parting for dad when he's out on the road. Right. I think people assume that part as well, that yeah. um, a lot of what we do that's misunderstood is that it's all fun and games, you know? And and in, in, at the end, when you're looking at what you've done, you're like, I did this, this is amazing. But those long days on set and the traveling and all that, it definitely can take its hold for sure. Yeah. You know, if you don't keep your mind right, you, you can get wrapped up in the wrong stuff just to survive. And uh, I've been good in the second half of my life, not getting myself. I, I hear you. <laughs> I've been a good girl, so yeah. I, 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 the, the rodeo is in Las Vegas every year. So I'm there for 16 days. Ooh, and everyone's like, oh, okay. you're so lucky. And I'm like, would you want to spend 16 days in a hotel room? And I mean, some of my younger friends are like, woohoo. Yeah. 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 I'm like, been there. <laughs> yeah. Been there, done that. Um, as you get older, you, you understand what's important and you, you do, you miss that consistency. Like I miss yeah. the consistency of my, every day i just want to you know some days i'm just like i just want to get up go to the gym come home and hang out by the pool <laughs> that's all i want to do yeah, well, some days i would every day uh-huh yeah <laughs> you know i was gonna i was gonna ask you you know i don't and i don't know if you're in a relationship right now or not but it's gonna be di how are you do you think back and go oh my god this is gonna be hard for me to Who's going to want to date me if, if I'm gone for two weeks or a week at a time or how tough is that? Yeah, no, that's, that is, that's true. I think that's been, um, yeah, I've, I've been in such a situation for a, a long period of time. And, and I think that is a hard thing. Like when, when you're trying to, I'm trying to think of how to even answer that, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I've been I pretty know. in the realm of him being completely understanding of that part of the business. Um, but I do think that like, nobody wants to, nobody wants to deal with this. I, the flip side of that is I think that nobody wants to deal with what comes along with it. There's, you know, weird people, I, you know, stalkers, I don't mean to go on the dark side of it. I hope that's I okay. Know. But one of the big things is like the stalkers, yeah. um, the weirdness, the people showing up, not, I don't know how you know that I'm here, but some fan or I shouldn't even say fan follower that I don't even know, or I've talked to a handful of times and just shows up where I'm at. Like there's some dark sides to that. And I think it, it can make any man uneasy to, you know, have their girl dealing with that kind of stuff um, when they're not around. I give, I'll give you a perfect example of that. Mm -hmm. One of my buyers uh, for my day job, she's yeah. a huge Taylor Swift fan. Oh yeah. She's a Swifty. Mm-hmm, a Swifty. And, and so she goes, do you think that uh, her and uh, Travis, right, Kelsey, do you think they'll stay together? And I said, you know what? I, I don't know. I mean, Travis, he doesn't, he doesn't need that fame. Like, he's, he's famous on his own, but not that famous. Like, yeah. he can still go to the grocery store and, and, and say hi or sign an autograph, whatever. He ain't doing that with, with Taylor Swift. No. So I don't know. You know, maybe it's fun and novel right now, but at some point, is he going to go, it's every day. It's every day. And the thing that I feel is that with, with the guys in the dating world is if they have children, like now you're dealing with, yeah. okay, well, your children can be affected by my job, but also, you know, then that there's an exit involved and there's all these other things that they get uptight about the things that can happen. Like there's not always that safety net around uh the, being in our world right anything yeah. can happen like being so open i said this uh, a couple of days ago i or yesterday actually like i wish i could just have my page be private sometimes so i could have that 
kind of have a little bit more fun and you know people always know where I'm at you have to take a picture and post it after you're gone you can't yeah. ever be like I'm here at this you know and so those are the little things that I see like family and friends that they get to do and and again not the, the dark same side thing. of it but yeah. yeah it's like just just wait till we get done I'm like, all right. Yeah, right. Yeah. Definitely wait till you're that done and out of there. Just from the experiences I've had, I don't do, you know, I don't do that anymore. I won't post when I'm actually somewhere. And if I do, I might say I'm there, but I'm actually not there anymore. Well, I'm already you know, gone. It's uh, uh I learned that when um with my daughter. She's 30 now, but she was, you know, it was probably uh, six, seven years ago. Yeah. And I said to her, I said, you know, I'm I'm having a harder time getting some women on my podcast. You know, I don't know. I don't know if they're thinking they just don't respond, reply to guys, whatever she goes, dad, mm -hmm. I guarantee mm -hmm. they're getting hit on all the time or get, I'm like, what? I go, yeah, but I'm reaching out through LinkedIn all that. I know she goes, dad, I get gross guys hitting on me at LinkedIn too. And I'm like, really? Oh, wow. Like, Even on LinkedIn. So it made yeah, me think like, I, I wouldn't uh, doubt it. <laughs> I'm like, okay. So I had to really kind of re it made me rethink like, how is she, how much weirdness is she getting in her life? Sure. Yeah. yeah, I stopped. I actually, I feel really bad because I don't know how to handle this part of it, but I think I need an assistant maybe could help me, but I don't always know how to handle the overwhelming amount of DMs. And then what I do is I end up not responding to any of them or whatever. Yeah. And I, you know, Instagram has that thing now where it will say it, they actually put you in a content creator section. It says this person, yeah. like, so you kind of know, okay, this is somebody I might want to talk to or or whatever. But um, as a whole, I get overwhelmed. And then I just like let everything go. And it's not just Instagram. It's everywhere. TikTok, TikTok and mm -hmm. uh, Live E were where I had my my actual big um, platforms. Like I have a lot of followers there. And I just can't. I just like, I can't do this. Um, so I don't really know what goes on in my DMs. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not sure I want to know what goes on in my DMs. I don't... And that, I, obviously, I don't have any of those issues. I was going to ask you, it's like, do you get, do you get, is it in your head? Like, oh, I'm going to be traveling today. So like, I, you don't want to do hair and makeup, but then like, if you're flying through LAX and the camera paparazzi is there or whatever, are you, are you consciously aware of that? Yeah, usually I'm really good. Most people know me. I'm wearing glasses and a pair of sweats that have a hoodie. And it's just really because like, I, I mean, I like to go without hair and makeup. I don't want to have to get on an airplane. <laughs> <laughs> and be all dolled up like I'm gonna fall asleep or something so um yeah no I don't get myself ready it, it is honestly honestly god it's 80 20 80 percent of the time I have no makeup and no yeah. hair done and I think a lot of people will see me like this where somebody else got me ready and it's just based on the fact that there's this character that I have to withhold online but if you you know if you go on my TikTok uh you'll see me live a lot of times and I'm just I'm just me I have no makeup yeah. My hair's on top of my head. I'm wearing my stinky sweats from earlier at the gym. And that's kind of the, that's the actual life I live. Um, which is the, like, it's kind of fun because when I get to have these type of conversations with people, um, they get to know me on a different level versus like, oh my God, you're totally different than I thought you were. Like I saw yeah. this girl online and this and that. And the reality is like, I'm a tomboy who loves to go fishing and camping and kayaking and um yet this there's this little emphasis of me online that looks like well I don't know what I look do I look like I'm just all over the place I'm not <laughs> sure but <laughs> there's this character that I play and I think um it's just a misunderstood job where uh they think everything we post must be real and that's not true either I you wouldn't believe how many times people say oh my god I'm so sorry you're going through that or what the heck are you talking about you got some sugar daddy or you know I'm yeah. like no I'm just I'm making content. I'm being funny. I'm just putting out there, you know, the funny vibes that people know me as. Um, and that's about, that's, that's about it. Well, I, I it, it is interesting because so much like, you know, when we were growing up, mm -hmm. um, you know, Lee Majors, $6 million man or, or, or Linda Carter, Wonder Woman, you knew nothing about them, about their personal life. No. I mean, once in a while there'd be an article like people magazine or something. Yes. Go, oh, I didn't know he was married or, Oh, I didn't know he had three kids, you know? Right. But now it's just like, Hey, I know what he had for breakfast today, you know? And I, yes. so it's kind of, it's, I don't know. That's kind of weird. Like, like the person my daughter used to work for 
couldn't go. She didn't go down. She wouldn't go down to like Starbucks because she didn't want to have makeup on. And mm -hmm. if paparazzi caught her, oh, what's trouble in paradise? You know, right? You're like, no. I, I just wanted a matcha latte. <laughs> it's like I was just having that conversation with my makeup girl today. That's so funny you say, because um, she was saying she saw this thing online when she was she was showing her friend that was with her. They googled or something, and she was talking about it. And I was telling her how in one picture they'll they'll have me where I look ready yeah. and there's one where they, they zoomed in on me like what's wrong and it was just on a t-page it wasn't it it's still paparazzi but it's it's more of a t-page so it's not like the high-end tmz saying that about yeah. me but still like i didn't know i had a black head on my nose but everyone else did far enough <laughs> yeah the whole world is just like tisha looks like crap without makeup and hair and it's because they do that on purpose. They they need something to talk about. So <laughs> right. they do that. But I'm telling you, I've got the big glasses. I can cover half my face at any time. <laughs> and Whenever was, necessary. Whatever's necessary, exactly. And that so. that that's I think that's the downside of, of the celebrity. Like I, I I would hate to not be able to go to the store and just go get like butter because we ran out. Right. Absolutely. You know, yeah, it's... I'd have to call my assistant and they'd have to come in and go get me butter. It's like, come on. See, and I have the, I have the problem where I'm not, you know, I'm not Taylor Swift where I'm so recognizable that people are like, that's Taylor Swift. My problem is they're like, she's somebody. I know you. Yeah. I've seen you. Can't put a name to it, but I know you. And then like, you know, people will kind of either they'll stare or sometimes they'll come up and ask me or talk to me or I've been called uh tiger woods is ex probably more than anything mm. else on the planet. I've actually been stopped for autographs of them thinking I'm her probably more than anything else or Jenny McCarthy, if I have the right shades on, but, um, I think her name's Aaron. Is it Aaron? I, I, I think so. Ellen, but I, her, Ellen, no, 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 I get that one a lot. People, if I'm out in LA or I'm down in that area and I'm just out and about, got my glasses on, people will be like, oh my God, you're Tiger, Tiger Woods is ex. And I'm like, I get that so much. Like, no, nope. I wish it's not. <laughs> I'm still trying to pay my bills. I think she's doing just fine. <laughs> Probably done. Yeah, exactly. Right. She got the one that she needed. Yes. Uh huh. For sure. All good. I was going to ask you, you're in great shape and you're <laughs> traveling a lot. How is it diet and, and exercise when you're on the road? Do you have a, a routine or is it? Uh, yeah, <laughs> I know no, that I, I, yeah, that's so it's a hard question to answer because I, I wouldn't say that I'm always doing the best in my in my sure. dietary when I'm working uh, just because I have a special diet. I have celiac disease, so it's really okay. hard to find food for myself. Um, but I am on 100% uh, carnivore diet and uh, it works great. I get my blood work done. It seems like everything looks good. So I'm not really missing much, but I do have my down times where my body tells me, okay, it's time to add something to it. And I will add a little something to it as long as it's not sugar-based. Um, but yeah, I'm not really good at that. I do. I do the gym probably six days a week. I try to do seven, but oh uh, if I have to get up at four in the morning and do wall Pilates or go swag today, I went swimming. Um, I do something. I absolutely yeah. have to. I think it's it's more like to release that extra energy. It's not even about getting in shape at this point. It's just releasing the energy that we hold inside as humans. I don't know why, but I get a lot of that. Um, what is it called? Like it's RLS, but it's in your whole body. Like you just feel mm -hmm. the energy bouncing around. And then that once I've done some sort of workout, I feel better. See, for me, yeah. I if I don't do something, yeah, I have a hard time sleeping. Yeah. And I wonder if that's just like, as we get older too, I, I don't, I can never tell now that I'm talking with you. It's good to hear that because I don't know. I was like, is it because I'm anxious from all the work I'm doing and all the traveling and stuff, or is it, you know, based on like that age and, and now you kind of need to stay active to release that in order to sleep. Cause I don't sleep good if I don't work out either. Yeah, I'm just saying. So, like, if I we just go for a walk or we went for a bike ride yesterday, I go for a roller skate today. Yeah. But if I don't do that, I feel like all of a sudden I'm, I'm in bed and I'm just like, okay, I'm still awake. I got a lot of things on my head. And I think, you know, whereas if I get really tired, then I just pass out and all that. Yeah. Then I wake up. That's, 
That's exactly how I feel. Exact same. And then hotels are really hard to. Yeah. That's a that's the one thing about traveling that I don't like. I don't like sleeping in hotel rooms. I'll bring my big pillow with me. I'm like, I don't care. I'll be smacking people around trying to get on the airplane with my big old pillow. I'm like, sorry, excuse me, coming through. I'm not allowed to. I did that once and I left the pillow in the in the hotel room because I was in a hurry to get out. Yes. Like she's like, you can't take the pillows. Anymore. You can't, yeah. Your wife is not letting you take those pillows anymore. I don't I feel her because I love my pillows and I would just die if I lost them. Yeah. And I'm like, well, I'm not going back to Dallas to get a pillow. So we're, we're all <laughs> you can keep the pillow. I'll just yeah. Well, oh, I've left clothes behind, you know, and they'll call me and say, I'm like, no, just leave it. I don't, I'm not paying $40 to ship a shirt back. I got for free. You know? Yeah, absolutely. So, ah, I, that's funny. I guess if it was my boots or something. I'd probably, I'd probably be like, yeah, let me get those boots back. But yeah, shoes. no, like the, some expensive shoes or something that would make sense. I'm the same way. I, I think I've lost a lot of things in, uh, like the last one I lost my foam roller, my back foam roller i left it wait i have a portable size one yeah well that's what mine was yeah, yeah. <laughs> i lost it i guess got a new, i just met somebody uh julie uh she has a, a maybe i'll send you a link okay offline but uh it's a ball that you can deflate and it's got some stuff in it but then when you inflate you don't inflate all the way but it helps you um release your hips so like i because i sit you know i'm either Ooh, driving or sitting or flying mm -hmm. a lot so like the, my sciatic yeah. and all that and so oh you, my goodness. you roll on it just and it's good dude we should we need to go get those those for our sponsors both of us should be going after this whatever this hip thing is because i need that you're gonna have to send me a link for that for reals i will I'm, yeah i'm I mean, going after that i'm calling them today and being I'm like supposed to see her tonight so. sponsor. She, has, yes. she has an open house she she she's a uh she's like us she, she, uh, she's like me i guess she's independent just hustling sons in college she's by herself and and Awesome. I love it. Yeah. When her thing, I love it when women are just out there doing their thing. So okay. yeah, definitely send me her link. I'll I'll go check that out. I'll follow her, support her. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's what we're all about, though, right? I mean, that's got, that's, that's the vibe I get from the billboards people, like your whole your whole 100%. crew. Yes, they, Jen and Will, they have it figured out. They both have the hearts of wanting to do for others. This isn't right. just all about them. They really are out there trying to say. This is this is how you do it. Let us help you. It was really interesting because we were on a big Zoom call yesterday, uh, trying to structure one of our next big events. And um <clears throat> I loved how one of one of the girls that's coming in on the event was asking a question and Jen came in with the answer. And she was like, you know, let me kind of switch that out on you. We're here for you to support you in what you're doing, what does it look like for you? Yeah. And like legitimately, I was just like, I love the way she does that because that's exactly what it is. We're out here supporting people in what they're already doing. We're taking these brands and we're we're saying, hey, like we're going to show you guys off, but everybody that's involved is getting something out of what we're doing on those days. On When we do activations and events and stuff like that, you can't you can't leave our event without a smile on your face and be like, wow, that is so unique. That is just the way to do it. Everyone should be doing it. People are trying. People are actually out there trying to do what we're doing. So it's it's pretty awesome. They're they're taking Jen and Will's uh, recipe and they're trying to make it their own. That's kind of that was my that's kind of my take on on the concert that I'm working on. I love it. Is, yeah, is not so much for me, but like the artists that I've had on, it gives them a, a separate venue. The venue gets some good names that they might not get all together. My sponsors get to be you know so I hope. It doesn't work if everyone doesn't benefit from it. Absolutely. And that's all you can do to to level up in this world. I, I think that there th that's another thing that's changed when we were speaking of that earlier. In um, any part of the Hollywood world, now the one benefit we do have is that we have that term collaboration and yeah. we all really are coming in. I mean, there's always money flying for different purposes. But in the end, we're collaborating as a whole. Everything that we do, everything, everyone involved has to be doing their part. And we all have to be getting something out of it. Um, and that's what we hope that when people leave our events or even the ones that don't want to have lunch parties and they work with us, we want them to walk away with that. Like going, wow, okay, you know what? They actually did what what they said they were going to do.
that's that's half the battle because a lot of yes. people don't. Absolutely. So out of all the places you've visited so far throughout your illustrious career in life, what's what's the most influential place you've been to? Just specifically for work or just no. in general? In general. Oh. Hmm. I well, I'm really excited to say that I just got back from Europe and I was able to go to my homeland, which was uh Czechoslovakia. Right. I was in Prague. And I was super impressed. I not only did it, like everyone looked like they were related to me. I was like, what the heck? <laughs> all the came out here. All the, you know, the pale white skin. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Moles. Like, I'm like, wow, we're all family here. Um, It was beautiful. It was amazing. I felt like I was at home. And that was a really great experience for me Um, on a personal level. Um, As far as work goes, New Zealand is as far as I've gone to travel for a movie. Before. Um, right. That was 20 years ago. Um, and that was a great experience. I got to fly on my first, you know, jet. Yeah. And got to go do a little movie that never even came out, by the way. I learned, yeah. So then I learned, well, wow, you can put uh, millions of dollars into something, travel, change your whole life, and then it doesn't even come out. Like yeah. <laughs> there's this whole other side of uh uh, the movie business too, where people don't really know, I guess that projects get cut off in the middle and even after they've been done, you know, you go through that whole process and you get paid and never even see it on the big screen. I, I, I did a, it's probably 15 years ago. I did a background stuff, background acting. Yeah. And I, I was on a show, uh, Ethan Hawke was a pilot for a Fox television show. I played a, um, a, a airline pilot. So I got, I got the costume and all that. Cool. Yeah, and we walked up and did all that. Never aired. Never happens. made it. Happens. And you're like, guys, you're telling everyone, like, I promise this happens. Like, I'm <laughs> there. <laughs> that happens so much more than people know. And, yeah. and like, the more you, you get into this business, the more it just kind of rolls off your shoulder. But I remember when I was younger, it was a little more affecting to me when I had one line or I didn't even have a line, but I was next to you know, uh, Diane Keaton or something yeah. like that. And then it doesn't air. And it's like, oh man, like I just told everybody in my world. And now I'm just like, I don't tell anyone anything. Um, I'm excited to to tell you about my upcoming projects here soon. Uh, Cause they're all in the works and ready, but sometimes, yeah, those things happen. And you're just like, ah, oh. Ex- you're excited, especially in the first 10 years of your career, you're working so hard and every time you, you watch yourself. Now I don't watch myself. I don't even go see myself because I'm like, oh, I'll just judge myself. But in the beginning, you watch every episode you're on, yeah, you yeah. all your family and friends. It's like the most exciting thing. <laughs> That's so true. That's, I, I I don't listen back to my show anymore. Like, yeah. oh, I, mean, yeah. I, I just, I don't. Mm-hmm. I yeah, have to you, do the, find, you find the flaws in what you do, or you're just like, eh. I've I do the editing, you know, so I, st- I still edited. check the audio, but I've done so much of it now that I have my settings pretty well set. I don't, I don't have to. You just, you just put it out now and you wait for the people to listen. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it, that's just how it works. What, what, uh, what do you have coming up? Like, what are the projects that you want my, my fans to kind of stay in touch with what you have going on? Yeah. Or, so- I, I know you can't talk about them all, so. Oh, right. I can, I can give you some, I definitely can give you some breakdown um, about my upcoming two movies. They're, they'll be filmed pretty much back to back for the most part. Um, it's uh, the name of it's called STEM and it's through RC Rockefeller Entertainment. Cool. And it's amazing. I'm so thrilled to actually be like, I'm a supporting role in this movie. So this will be the biggest movie role I've done in my life. And this is going to be cool. life changing. Yeah. And it's such an amazing experience to work with somebody like him. I mean, he's sort of taken me under his wing and is mentoring me and teaching me a thing or two, as well as letting me be on the back end of some of his other projects that he's doing. So I have been, I don't, I still, I'm like, I can't even wake up every day and like, am I really doing this? Is this really happening? Because it, really is life-changing so the stem movie is actually going to roll right into the second stem movie so i think we're going to be filming 
the first stem um, and then we'll have a little downtime and then go right into the second wow. um, the second stem. So 2025 and 2026 guys, I'm I'm booked and I'm excited and I get to play <laughs> this this funny sort of nerdy lab girl. Hopefully there's a little nerdy and a little sexy in there, but basically nerdy and I've always wanted to play nerdy. So I'm like, I'm gonna go all in. I, if I'm allowed, I'm I just glasses and everything, hair pulled back. Yeah. I want people to kind of see that I have this other side of my acting. You know, I've played the crazy girl. I play I've told you like I had the type yeah. for many years. Um then I've played crazy and I've played a little drama. But I think this is gonna be the place that people get to see that I can really um hunker down and and see me as the actress I've been waiting for people to see me as. Well, that's nice. Yeah. That, that's it. And then and then you got Billboard and you said maybe October. Yeah, Billboard Zinc. If everything goes well, I'm I'm hoping that everything's uh structured and set up so that we can release in October. Um, you know, shortly after that's hiatus hiatus. So worst case scenario, I guess we may be coming coming out, but that's what we're striving for. The whole team has done such an amazing job. Shout out to Deanna and Patrick and Derek for everything that they're doing behind the scenes. And yeah, they're just getting it done. So I'll be excited to follow up with you and let you know exactly what, but that is our goal. That, hey, I'll definitely take a, a follow up. Uh, you know, yes. in 25, 26, it's going to be interesting because, you know, where, where are we going to be as, as a country? You know, I know. It's going to yes. be interesting. It I think will it's be, be good. It's going to be interesting. Everything is, yeah, I know. Like, it, I, you know, what's funny is every four years, everything gets really chaotic. So I get a little nervous. <laughs> like, what's going to happen? Well, you know, with, happen? With, with COVID and, and, and everyone coming out of the pandemic, you know, COVID affected almost all my business travelers and some uh, for the better. I mean, some people really did well coming out of COVID and, right. and some got hurt tremendously. I did. I got hurt a lot. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> hey, I had four accounts go out of business in Hawaii because they couldn't travel. So it's like, all the people that worked at that store and then people like me that supplied that store are just gone. Man. Like, yeah. My two companies I was doing, uh, I was a talent manager that was running different events as well as getting like a lot of these famous kid TikTokers on tours and, and doing meet and greets. We had two different um, things set up for traveling and tours. We also had one was with the world of dance and was one was teamed up by rather not say on air who yeah. my old people were, but um, lost it all, like lost everything. And we worked so hard to get where we were, lost our MTV deal because we had a, a content house before they really didn't have any um, shows at that point about content houses with, you know, the TikTok kids. Yeah. We were trying to be the first to do that. And of course, during COVID, um, they they came out with some others so that's fine it didn't work out the way it was supposed to and there's probably a reason for it but it was it was tough I mean I was living off of my savings and yeah. just it was a struggle I wouldn't want to do that again ever I interviewed Chris Grattan I think in May 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 or June of 2020 and he was the tour manager for Justin Bieber yes and okay he had just hired 74 people for that tour, all the people, I mean, all the people, all the gaffers and rigs and all that, he had to lay all 74 people off because at first it was like, oh, just two weeks. And so yeah. like, okay, well, we'll just wait. That's yeah. what we were doing. Yeah. And I, I talked to him, I think like two weeks, maybe a week after he just fired everybody and like they had yeah, left the job weeks, and everything. And then four weeks. And we kept thinking, that's okay. We can reschedule these cities. And then, yeah, next, you know, be. I mean, after three or four months, it just, you just kind of realize, like, this I don't know what's happen. going on. This doesn't make sense. It doesn't feel right, but there's nothing we could do about it. So we had to cancel everything. Yeah. 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 So, so he got hurt, but you know, obviously he's still doing more tours and, you know, things, things yes. keep going. But that's a, that's a great level to be at, though. So, Justin, they probably had, they have probably had a good time taking a little break. Yeah. I mean, I, I it's, I talked to Maxie Priest, who's a, a Grammy nominated reggae singer. And mm -hmm. he wished he wished for a break because you know he only makes money when he tours now. I mean, you know, album sales is gone. Right. And he wanted to take a break, but then he was in Jamaica and he couldn't get he couldn't leave the island. He's from England. Oh, 
Oh, like, that'd be so hard. And he's like, I can't wait to go on tour again. I want to, I want to, you know, it's been a while. You know, it's one of those, what is it? Yeah. Um, be careful what you wish for. Be careful what you wish for. All right. That's it. Where does he live? I'm going to tell him. It was his fault. We all shut down. <laughs> he Sorry, wished Matthew. for it. Here we are. <laughs> Sorry, No, Matthew. but you're right. I think you do. You get what you wish for. And then you're like, oh man, I, I definitely was forced to, you know, slow down in life during that time. And I yeah. learned a lot of us learned how to do things differently. I mean, I went from being the talent manager to being an influencer to survive. I had to yeah. go in front. That's that's where you see me now because at, when COVID was hitting, my posts were all about my tours and my events and all these different things we we're doing versus now everything's based on, you know, content creation because just because during that time I had to find a way to make money. And I'll be honest with you, TikTok saved my life. Like it, um, it did. I didn't know what I was doing. I made a TikTok. I was like, well, that's what all my kids have. That's where they're making money. Let me just try and use the recipe that I helped them with and see if I can make it work for myself. And I think I was pretty blessed in that because it did. I was paying my bills off of TikTok money. That's insane. Yeah. In a good, but, in a good way, but that's insane. Yeah. I know it's so crazy when you're used to making so much money and then you kind of had to slow down, obviously not on this quite the same level, but yeah. I was surviving and I was staying where I was at and being able to take care of my kids. So thank, thank goodness for TikTok. I will always be thankful for that. It just it like you know, right time, right place. So, right. Yeah. I mean, that worked out. That's good. It did. Yeah, absolutely. What is the best way for my fans to, to follow up with you. I mean, do you want them on Instagram? Oh, you're talking about TikTok a lot, so I don't know. Sure. Yeah. No, uh, you know, you can put in Tisha Vaculin anywhere and I'll pretty much pop up. Um, but yeah, I'd say I'm most active on Instagram based from a business standpoint. Right. And if you want to see the funny, goofy side of me, um, that would be TikTok. So Tisha.Vaculin on Instagram and Tisha Vaculin one on TikTok. I was going to ask I think you're the first person I've ever met that's making money off TikTok or talks about it. Is it difficult? Is it constant where you're, where you're, you're trying to think of content or? Yeah. So I don't really make the money. That Not was now, a, yeah. a thing originally that I did. I made money off the content and there's a lot of creators out there that do. Um, I'd say for, for COVID, I would just, I was going live I, as, as a broadcaster. Basically what you're doing right now with me, I was doing on TikTok and I still do uh, when I get a chance. I don't have a lot of time now. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, people people go on there and they tip you and you know, the money adds up. If you go in and you put in the work and you will make the money on there. And it, again, you, you shouldn't be making less than one to $300 a day if you go on there and you put in the work. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. That's, that's, that's... Yeah, I know. Thank you. I wish I had more time to be on there just because I know it's uh, so consistent. <laughs> There's a consistency there that um, if, if people don't quite understand, if you just go in, it's probably like anything you do. If you do it enough, yeah. you're, you know, you're going to make what you need and, and, and be, uh, we're, be we're, successful. Since you're an entrepreneur and you, I mean, because at what point does a hiring an assistant benefit you? Like I mean, versus the cost. I mean, there's, there's an expense. <laughs> yeah, no, there's definitely a cost. I'm right. Actually, I'm right there. Um, I'm right on the board of that. When I get started with my film, I am going to have somebody. I, you know, I have a couple people in mind that I'd like to have that, have that job. Um, but it's absolutely a must. I, I can't. I'm so scattered right now. I yeah. spend 50 to 60% of my time on Billboards Inc. Um, and the rest of the time between Rockefeller Entertainment and my socials trying to <clears throat> not only keep up, but also because there's still that money to be made. So it's a lot. And I now ha I'm having so many meetings every single day. Yeah. That I have to do that. Uh, uh, security, like all the above. I just, I'm trying to get that figured out. I have a great security team already. Um, but as a whole, I'm just like, thinking of how things are going to change so much for me in the next few months versus where I was, you know, even a year ago. Well, that's why, that's why I mean, I feel like I'm almost in that same boat where I'm like, yeah, I got the concert. I got the pocket. I got my job. I got my, my wife. I got all these things. <laughs> that's the most important. Don't forget the wife is the most important. 
<laughs> she, she can hear me, so she knows. Oh, good. Okay, yeah, she knows. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> You know, they say happy wife, happy life. I'm telling you, that is the truth. <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, but the, the, you get to that point where you go, what am I? Maybe I'm not, I feel like I'm not doing everything I could be to the max, which mm -hmm. is just how my brain works. So I'm like, well, then why do it if I can't? But man, if I had one person just to do this or do that for me. Yeah, it's a, and it's so 100% true. I think that you get to a point where your plate is so full that you have to start either wiping some of that food off or you got to get somebody that has their own plate. And that's that's what it looks like for me. I really wish I could have my sister. My sister came out uh, one week a few months ago and she assisted me in everything I did. And I couldn't believe what that amounted to like she yeah. was remembering dates and times because you get so much just stuck in there like you said you're you're just like me you've got over here this company here this company here this project this team blah, blah, blah. and you're like I can't I don't I don't know what belongs where you can't yeah. just like organize it in your head no matter how many apps you have it's hard to do so having that assistant is it's just such a it's just such a game changer. So hopefully for you and I both, we can. I'm gonna say you out. let me know where you find your assistant. I don't know. Here. Yeah, no, I'm still wishing my sister could do it, but she lives far away, so it probably won't happen. But I'm yeah, definitely by the time I get started on um my first first STEM movie, I'm gonna need it because I just have my downtime. I'm gonna be sitting in the trailer, da -da -da -da, da -da -da, yeah. doing all these other things. And uh, I'm just going to need somebody to fill in those blanks for me. I'm waiting. Maybe I'll take your leftovers, you know. There you go. I'm going to push them right over to you. <laughs> I'll do it. <laughs> well, I wish you the best, obviously. It's it's great. Great meeting you. And see, I, I love hearing people saying busy. Yes. So. Busy is good. I, You know, I mm -hmm. will never complain ever again about where I'm at because I asked for it. I appreciate it. I'm blessed. And yeah, thank you for having me on your show today. It was amazing. Everything flowed wonderfully. And mm -hmm. I really hope we can do this again sometime, especially yeah. after we get some of these projects out of the way. Yeah, maybe we'll do a, a I'm trying to think because it's I can't believe it's it's July, like in less than a week. I know. It's insane. Man. But you know, the um maybe yeah, I'm trying to think maybe before billboards comes out or something in September, you know, right before the October thing. We'll get some of the other castmates or whatever. Let's do it. We'll get them all in the same place. We'll get them on here. I'd love to do that. Thank you. That'd be cool. All so, right. Thank you so much for the day. And uh, I can't wait to keep following and see what you have coming up. Yeah. All right. Well, you take care and have a wonderful rest of your week. Thanks, Tisha. You too. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.